Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I bless you. I bless you, Lord. I thank you for your love, your mercy, your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing double duty today. Uh, this is Billie Jean Bishop on our 90 days of prayer for prodigals. And today uh, we are looking at day 53, day 53 of our 90 days of prayer for prodigals. And for those of you that just finished um, with me praying at my normal eight o'clock hour, we prayed the Sermon on the Mount. And yes, you're seeing me twice, <laughs> but we're saving all of these 90 days of prayer to a YouTube source. So we'll, we'll be able to go back and listen to them. Uh, this is day 53 of 90 days of prayer. We began October the 1st and we're going till the end of December. Every Friday, we have had uh, hosted testimonies. You can go back on my page and listen to those powerful testimonies of returned backsliders. And uh, last week was very powerful. Sister Cheryl testified about being away from the Lord for 26 years and how God restored her in great love and um, how God gave her divine connection uh, to meet her pastor's wife after 26 years and uh, shopping and how God uh, brought her through some very serious losses and how God restored her mind. You, you, you just got to listen. You got to listen to all the testimonies. Um, we'll have them on one source here soon, I, I, I trust. But let's just go ahead and focus on today's devotion. Day 53, uh, what the locust hath eaten. Uh, day 53, I, if you haven't been following along, we are utilizing a book, which is a scriptural guide. And forgive my torn pages, but this little book is called Prayer for Prodigals. 90 days of prayer for your child. And it's full of scripture journeys. You can tell that mine is well worn. And, and today's devotion, I try to go back and read those scriptures in my Bible. I also follow Sister Donald and Diane Long with Hope Ministries. They have wonderful uh, posts every day, uh, giving snippets of the day's devotion. And uh, uh, that's what I'm going to read from today and use it as our, our teaching. So what the locust hath eaten. The, for those of you that have never seen locusts, I have seen them in Utah, and you can go to the internet, and they're, they're like a big grasshopper, but they can consume. I, I, I used to know all the stats of how much a locust can consume in his belly, and when you have a swarm of locusts, it can completely annihilate miles, miles of fields of harvest. And the locusts come. They come when the, when the harvest is ripe. They, they don't come when the seed is in the ground. The, the locusts come when there is a harvest. And it seems like for many of us, and I feel that I'm saying this under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that we feel like that our children were snatched from us in a very tender promising time in their life maybe in their teens i have prodigals in my life that were snatched away in their teens when they were young when they were tender hearted towards god the enemy brought deception and consumed their faith but it's not over it's not over and then the the canker worm what the canker worm it, it talks about in the bible that's a very subtle small insect and they can devour an entire plant when there's many of them. And so hell has sent out um, the locust and the canker worm to destroy our backsliders' faith. But I'm here to tell you today that the Lord has said in his word and is saying to us today on day 53 that what the locust and the canker worm hath eaten, that he's going to restore it. Let's look at Joel chapter 2 and verse 25 and the scripture says 
I will, this is an NIV, I will repay you for the years that the locust hath eaten. What has the locust eaten in your life? What, what is dry and, and is dead and seems like that it's, it's an empty field. There's no hope. Nothing's, nothing's growing. The Lord said, I will repay to you what the locust hath eaten. For the years, some of your backsliders have been away for years, and the Lord says, I'm going to repay you. We have to look forward to payday. When I was working, I'm now retired and in full-time ministry with Partners in Prayer, but I always look forward to payday. Uh, we'd always try to um, eat uh, eggs and toast or something, <laughs> to, beans to last till payday. We'd try to stretch everything, and we look forward to payday. And there is a hope in the Lord that there's a payday coming. And it's not just in this um, eternal plan that God has for us. It's here and now, here and now. Uh, we can look forward to payday as we get closer and closer to it. There's a payday coming, brothers and sisters. We know there is help coming and we can get excited. We can get exceedingly get glad. We can prepare for a celebration because payday is coming for those of us with prodigals. It's coming. It's coming for me. It's coming for you. It's coming for my church. It's, we're already seeing it happen. Payday is coming. It's better than any payday we've ever had before, Sister Long wrote. We can look forward to it with great anticipation. I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. I am hopeful. I am excited about having family come and hugging grandbabies and sharing a meal and a prayer together. And with great anticipation, we can expect the return of our backslidden families. We can expect it with anticipation. You might need to stir up that anticipation. Don't look at the field where the locust has eaten it down to the ground and there seems to be nothing growing. Trust me when I say the word of God said that he is going to repay you for the years that the locust hath eaten. Hallelujah. The Lord has promised that we will get back. Did you hear me? We will get back what was stolen from us. Have you ever had something stolen? Have you ever had something? Have you ever gone to your workshop? And I have. <laughs> and gone to get my power tools only to find the door open and the tools gone. Have you ever had something stolen from you? The Bible tells us in Joel that everything that was stolen from you is going to be returned to you. Now, I was reading this morning about how to collect stolen your, your stolen goods. You go down to the police station and you've reported a crime that your, your child's, we had this happen in our neighborhood over and over where your child's bicycle was stolen. And uh, we went down to the police station and we gave them the little serial number and we described the color of the bike and, and they looked up on their uh, collected goods and they sure enough sure enough my children's bicycles was in that list and was in a storeroom but I described to them what that bike looked like that bike belonged to us it didn't belong to the thief that came in and stole it from our property and God is reminding us today he sees everything he sees it all. He knows what the God of this age has stolen from your children. He knows what he has tried to strip you of. Your attack, uh, uh, the attack that has come to your family, has the enemy has tried to strip you and steal and destroy your faith. He has disillusioned and blinded the eyes of your prodigals, but he's tried to destroy and steal your faith. And God is saying to you that that which has been taken from you is going to be restored, restored. That means that 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 stolen goods is in your possession. Again, they're going to come under your roof. 
they're going to worship beside you. And if they live in another place, you're going to share on a telephone somewhere. I'm speaking the prophetic today, that it's going to seem like that they've never been gone. You're going to talk about the things of God. Yes, you're going to need to love them. Yes, they're going to need to be restored. Yes, grave clothes are going to need to come off of them. But you're going to remember what the locust hath eaten, and it's going to be a far memory because you're going to hold that promise and you're going to see it with your own eyes. On this day 53 of 90 days of praying for our backsliders, the Lord has promised that which has been taken from you is going to be restored. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to our lesson. Sister um, Long says, what a payday, what a payday that will be when we receive our reward. We will rejoice and be glad that we stood in faith. Are you standing today? Don't be discouraged. Don't look at the, what the locust hath eaten. Look to heaven for the promises of God. Look in his word. Read the scripture. Know that there's a payday. There's a reward coming. Hallelujah. As we, that we stood in faith, never wavering, never wavering, but held on believing. And let us not be weary, the Bible says, in well-doing. That includes waiting for our backsliders, loving them, being long-suffering with them, allowing the fruit of the Spirit to come through you so that they can see Jesus. They can see. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. That includes backsliders, the way you treat them, the way you love them, to let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you have confidence in them, that they're going to make a good decision for themselves and their families. Let them know that you see their faith and that God hears them. Don't lecture them. Don't preach to them. Love them. Love them and know that your reward is coming. Payday is coming. There's also another payday, Sister Long wrote, that we look forward to with great anticipation, knowing that the enemy has stolen so much will be dealt his final blow. His final blow will be dealt by the King of Kings himself and the Lord of Lords, and he will one day get the payday that's due him. Wouldn't you like to pay the devil back for everything that he has stolen, the confusion he's brought, the heartache, the nights you've stayed up in worry and prayer? You know, um, I've experienced that. You can't pray panic prayers. Brother and Sister Long from Hope Ministries have taught that. They've ingrained that in me. Pray prayers of faith. Find a scripture. Find, pray this Joel 2, Joel 2 and 25. What a beautiful scripture to pray back into the heart of God. The devil will get his payday. <laughs> He's going to get his payday. He's going to be stripped of all his power to kill, steal, and destroy. On day 53 of 90 days of prayer, my brothers and my sisters, everything that's been taken from you. How would you praise the Lord if you woke up in the morning and everything that had been taken from you was restored? Everything, the time, the finances, the tears, it's all been poured back up to, upon you. And every word that you have ever spoken in faith has now come to pass. Every prayer you've ever prayed for another family's backslider is coming back to your family. God is in the exchange business. He's going to take what the locust, canker worm, and what the enemy has endeavored to strip us of, and there's going to be a payday. God bless you. I hope this has helped you today. I hope there's something stirring in your heart. Day 53, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday, November the 23rd, and Sister McKee is going to come on, and she is going to teach tomorrow on day 54, day 54, and she's going to give another devotion. We won't have a devotion Thursday. We might Friday, but you've got your book. You've got your book in the early morning hours. You can go open up. Tomorrow is called Straight Steps, and it's about trusting in the Lord and leaning not to your own understanding. Uh, Thanksgiving Day is going to be um, of God's choosing. We've been talking all week long about treasuring things in, his, in, in our hearts. Treasure everything God speaks to us. Ponder it. Bury it. Write it out. Keep it. 
protect it, hold on to it because payday is coming. Your reward is coming. And then Friday, we start another week. Uh, you, you, do, you just don't want to miss this. If you don't have the book, go to amazon.com, the scriptures, the testimonies that's in here. All next week, starting this Friday, we will be focusing on, and it's our ninth week, we will be fo focusing on waiting for an answer. So I give you a little preview of what we're going to do the next coming days and all through the week. You don't need to stop a day of prayer because of the holidays. In fact, it's really important because you may have interaction with your backslider. I know I've gone a little lengthy today, but I wanted to reassure you, reassure you, God has heard your prayers. We're already getting reports. I got a report just before I came on live that a um, uh, 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 caller, I'm sorry, an intercessor, a friend of mine, her son and daughter were in church Sunday with her. Prayer works because God hears. God hears, and with a heart of compassion, he is going to restore everything that you and your family lost. Be patient with them, be long-suffering with them, and remember to continue to pray to the God who hears and answers prayer. God bless you again. I'm, I'm playing double duty today. I did live Zoom uh, praying last hour, and today's devotion, day 53 of 90 days of prayer. Will you share this? Do you have backsliders in your life? Just hit share. And if you're a backslider, I want to appeal to you. We're praying for you. We love you. We're waiting for you. You don't have to prove yourself to any of us. The Lord's love is going to be sufficient. The grace of God is here. We're, the grace of God and the mercy of God is what's waiting. If you want prayer and you're a backslider, reach out to me, Billy Jean Bishop. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to help you the best that I can because I love the backslider. And God loves you even more than I could even imagine. He loves you. He has a plan for you. So if you are a backslider, I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. And join us again tomorrow morning, day 54 of our 90 days of prayer for prodigals. God bless you.